Chapter 6, Lesson 9, Essential Question. How can the strategy work backwards help you solve a problem with fractions that involves addition and subtraction? Today's lesson is all about problem solving and using different strategies. The main strategy that we're going to work on is work backwards. Now, the way that the problems are going to look today are going to be similar to this, but they're also going to have a word problem, a real life problem to go with them. So, if we were looking for C, now the letter is called a variable and it can stand for any number in any situation. But in this case, we need to know what C stands for in this case. So we have 23 plus 14 plus C something equals 50. How can I figure that out? Well, we know that the opposite of addition, the inverse operation, is subtraction. And so if we start with our 50, we start with our total, and if we go 50, we can subtract one of our add-ins, let's just say 23, and that'll get us closer. So 50 minus 23 is 27. And then we still need to subtract our 14. So 27 minus 14, 7 minus 3, 2 minus 1, and that gives us 50. We don't have any more, to, or 13. We don't have any more to subtract, so C is going to equal 13. And how can we double check that? Well, let's plug 13 into the problem. So we'll write 23 and 14 and 13, adding all of these up. We know that 3 plus 3 equals 6 plus 4 is 10. 2 plus 1 plus 1 plus the one we regrouped equals 5. So our answer is 50. This way we can justify our answer of 13. We can say it is reasonable. Now there could be a shortcut to subtracting 23 and 24. We, this is another step. What we could have done is we could have added, and I'll just put a line right here, we could have added 23 plus 14 and found out what they were together, so that'd be 37, and then we could have taken 50, our total, minusing 37, and we would have still ended up with 13. Both of these ways are viable ways of solving this problem. With today's lesson, we're going to be doing multiple steps and using addition and subtraction to be undoing each other's, but we are going to be using fractions. Unlock the problem. The Dias family is cross-country skiing the Big Tree Trails, which have a total length of four miles. Yesterday, they skied the seven-tenths mile Oak Trail. Today, they skied the three-fifths of a mile Pine Trail. If they plan to ski all of the Big Tree Trails, how many more miles do they have left to ski? We're going to use a graphic organizer to solve this problem, but first, you need to underline what you're being asked to find and circle the important information. You should have underlined how many more miles do they have left to ski. I circled the words total length of four miles and then seven tenths and three fifths. So now we're going to look at our graphic organizer. So what do we need to find? We underline that. We need to find the distance of what they have left to ski. Then we need to decide what information do I need to use? Well, we circled four miles and seven tenths and three fifths, but how does that fit into here? We need to use the distance blank and the total distance blank, okay? Well, we know the total distance is four miles, so I can fill that part in. So I need to use the distance what? How are we gonna find what they have left to ski? To figure out what they have left to ski, I need to know what they have skied. So we need to use the distance they have skied, and that is um, the 7 tenths mile Oak Trail and the 3 fifths mile Pine Trail. 
So now that we have our information, how are we going to use the information? Our skill is to work backwards, so by working backwards, we are going to start with the total. And our total was the four miles. And then we are going to subtract by going backwards. Okay, so we're going to subtract each distance that they have already skied to find out what they have left. So let's look right here. It says addition and subtraction are inverse operations. By working backwards and using the same numbers, one operation does the other. So let's set up the problem that you would initially think of with this. So how many miles did they ski yesterday? That was the Oak Trail. So that was 7 tenths of a mile. And then how many miles did they ski today? That was the Three Fists Pine Trail. We don't know how many miles they need to ski yet, so we're going to put an M for miles. And our total distance is 4. Now, right now, before we can even start working by adding or subtracting, we need common denominators. And I can see right now that I can get my 5 to become a 10. So my 7 tenths is going to stay how it is, but I'm going to write an equivalent fraction for 5 tenths. And all I have to do is multiply each by 2. So right now I'm going to just cross those off and I'm going to start working with 6 tenths because I just multiply my numerator and my denominator by 2. And then I'm going to work backwards. And by working backwards, we start with our total. Our total is 4. And so then we're going to subtract. Well, let's subtract 6 tenths. And we are going to also subtract 7 tenths. That's essentially the way it would look. Now, before we can actually really do any of our subtraction, we do have one number that is not does not have a common denominator, and that is the 4. So we have to decide, are we going to create 4... Um, or rewrite 4 as just an improper fraction, or are we going to write it as a mixed number? Now, 4 is the same, and I'm just going to write, like, right up above it. 4 would be the same as 4 and 0 tenths. So if I wanted to write this as an improper fraction, I would go 10 times 4, which is 40, plus 0. And so our numerator would be 40, and our denominator would be 10. That could easily be one way for you to set up your subtraction problem. You could also do the regrouping where you would have three holes because you've taken one from the four and made it be 10 over 10 because that's a, a fancy way of writing one. But 10 isn't going to be quite enough to subtract both six and seven. So you could regroup it a second time and have 2 as a whole, and 20 over 10. Um, I'm going to choose to just write it as an improper fraction. And so I'm going to write, um, so I'm going to go 40 tenths minus 6 tenths minus 7 tenths. Now I know that 6 and 7 is 13. So I'm going to do just a little side work over here, and I'm going to go 40 minus 13, and so I have to regroup. So I'm going to end up with 27 tenths. Now that's an improper fraction, which I do not want as my final answer. We need simplest form. So if I go 27 divided by 10, I know that... 10 can go into 27 two times, and I would have 7 tenths left over. That cannot reduce, so my final answer is going to be 2 and 7 tenths. And so that means that the family had 2 and 7 tenths miles left to ski. Now I know that looks like a lot of work, and fractions are a lot of work, and it's really important to write down all of your steps, because if you make a small computation error, you can go back and fix from that spot on, otherwise you need to restart all the way over again. And then how can we explain that your answer is reasonable? 
well, the total needs to be 4, and is our answer less than 4? Yeah, so we know that we have done the correct um, operations to get there. So my answer of 2 and 7 tenths is less than the total 4. As a part of their study of Native American basket weaving, Leah's class is making wicker baskets. Leah starts with a strip of wicker 36 inches long. From the strip, she first cuts one piece, but does not know its length then cuts a piece that is six and a half inches long. The piece left is seven and three-fourths inches long. What is the length of the first piece she cut from the strip? Underline what you're being asked to find to circle the important information. So now you need to rephrase what you're being asked to find in this box. So say it in your own words or just a few words. Once you have what you need to find, what information are you going to use? So the information is 36 inches total, that's what they started with, and then the length of the other two pieces. And then how are you going to use this information? Remember our strategy is to work backwards. So you should start with your total, and then what? So start with total of 36 inches, then I said subtract each piece. Now that we have our information and how we're going to use it, we're going to actually solve it. The first thing you should do is set up your equation as the story um, problem tells you it. As I read the problem, this is what it told me. It said I started with 36 inches and then I cut off a piece and then I cut off six and a half inches and then they cut off seven and three-fourths inches but all of that is going to equal my 36. It may look a little funny to you to have the 36 on the equal sign on this side of the equation, but it is the exact same as if, as if it was written over here. So what's going to be the first step? Well, first thing that I see I need to do is I need a common denominator. I have a two and a four here. So what denominator am I going to use? I would use a 4, because I can leave this one alone and change this one. So I've changed 1 half to be 2 fourths, so now it's 6 and 2 fourths. The next thing is I'm going to start with my 36, and I'm going to start over here, and I'm going to subtract one of my pieces. I'm going to subtract 6 and 2 fourths. So remember that this is the same as 0 fourths. So I want you to press pause and work through this. Subtract the 6 and 2 fourths and then subtract the 7 and 3 fourths from whatever answer you get. After all of your work and there are regrouping, you should have ended up with 21 and 3 fourths. You can check your answer by plugging in 21 and 3 fourths to your equation. And I can see right here 21 and 6 is 27, and 27 plus 7 is going to be 34, which is pretty close to 36. So with those fractions, I feel pretty good. That means that the first piece was 21 and 3 fourths inches. Press pause while you work on the share and show problems. Make sure you use the workspace to show your work. And you use common denominators and make sure you do two steps for your problems. At least two steps. In number two, it's asking... What if this number 2 had been a larger number? Would our answer, the part remaining, be more or less? It would be less because we would be subtracting more from the 4 and 15 twentieths, or the 4 and 3 fourths.
Now that you're finished with the share and show, I want you to double check your answers and make sure that you didn't just make small computation errors and you are able to move on to your next task.